Hello, my name is Mayan Rossman, and today I'll be talking about competitive intelligence. Just a bit about myself, I am a global product lead at Google, working on Cloud SQL databases product in Google Cloud Platform. I started my career as database administrator for data-driven environments, and for the past 10 years, I've been building innovative solutions and products targeting different audiences and industries. I also build my own company, Blinks, a visual social application that helps people to create moments together. And why am I telling it to you? As an entrepreneur, I had to watch and track our competition. I had to know at any point of time what my competitors are doing and made sure to stay ahead. The way to track competition is called competitive intelligence. The best companies I worked for acknowledged competitive intelligence as a strategic initiative and built functions and operations to support it. Today, I would like to share with you my experience with creating competitive intelligence function, as I did on one of my previous roles as head of product strategy and operations. And to do so, first, we'll need to understand what is competitive intelligence and its goal. Why is it so important and what it has to do with product management? And last, more actionable steps to enable a process to support executives and product management teams in their strategic decision making. Competitive intelligence is a systematic collection of information about products, customers, competitors, and any aspects of the environment needed to support executives and managers in strategic decision-making for an organization. And the real goal of competitive intelligence is to make sure we stand out from the competition. And to do so, we need to always know what our competition is up to, what they're up to. The real goal of competitive intelligence is to make sure that we stand out from the competition. And in order to do so, we need to always know what they're up to. So let's talk about competitive intelligence and product management. How do they go together? The answer is product strategy. The product strategy describes how the product management function will help the company achieve its vision and business goals. It also describes our target market and our method of achieving business goals. The product strategy has four key components. Customers, business, the ecosystem, and competitors. Let's talk about each one of the components. Customers. This is the first thing we should define, who our customers are. The foundation of a successful business, what we call product market fit, a product that a customer wants. Are we building for enterprise customers, SMB? By the way, this can change a long time. The strategy can start with SMBs and afterwards change to enterprises. The business is how the product will make the money and achieve its business goals. Whether it's a subscription, so our customers are paying on a monthly basis like Netflix, for example, or freemium, limited access to features like Zoom does, retail, and so on. The ecosystem is the microenvironment we live in. So any economical changes, technological, political, and cultural forces might impact our uh, company and our products. Take COVID, for example, okay? This actually accelerated the digital transformation of a lot of the, of the companies we know today. So companies had to reinvent themselves and become approachable and online. Take healthcare providers, for example, they started supporting online doctor meetings and so on to be able to catch up with what the ecosystem had to offer. And the last, our competitors, and this is more most relevant to our topic today, is all about how we position our product to our customers, given the other products and services on the market. All these four components influences our product roadmap. And the product roadmap actually describes what products and features will be built to realize the strategy and the vision of the company. 
So competition has a lot of weight to what we build and how we stand out, out from our competition. And let me share an example with you. For those of you who are not familiar with Snapchat, Snapchat was founded in 2011 by Evan Spiegel. It is a social media app that enables users to post po photos and videos that disappear after a few moments. At the beginning, it was perceived as non important app, sexing app. So the big companies and the big players wouldn't waste their time on these silly products. It was beneath them. Who cares about it? But the teenagers loved it. It was innovative. It was their safe space to be themselves, to be imperfect. And with Snapchat's invention of stories and geo filters, they started to attract bigger share of the social media market and a quality audience. So older audience, celebrities, influencers, and more. With the growth of Snapchat in 2013, Zuckerberg, Facebook, understands the threats of the rising competitor. And he's trying to use his you know, well-known strategy with successful hot startups like Instagram and WhatsApp. And he actually offers to buy Snapchats for over $3 billion. Spiegel, the founder of Snapchat, turned down the offer. It took two years for Zuckerberg to realize this is an actual threat. And the ideological gap between Facebook, Instagram belief of you know, per permanence and data versus Snapchat belief of in informality got bigger every day. With the realization that acquisition is off the table, Zuckerberg decides to put a fight and starts copying Snapchat's features like stories that we all know that the photo or the videos you upload disappears after 24 hours. He was quoted, by the way, saying, don't be too proud to copy. And actually, by doing so, he managed to block the massive growth of Snapchat. And this is an example of how competition can change the product, can change the strategy. And if it, acquisition didn't work this way, the product did the work for Facebook. So how do we create a process to enable our product teams to conduct competitive intelligence research and influence the product strategy and roadmap. I will share a successful process that I came up with when I was the head of product strategy and operations. You can take it as a baseline and of course make adjustments based on your company's you know, maturity and structure, it's really up to you. This process I can tell you helped us a lot to be more efficient with the mass data that is out there. It allowed us to collect and analyze the important information and data on a regular basis, so we won't miss anything in our fa fast-paced industry that we are part of. The process has five steps, as you can see. The first is define the competitors, collect the data that is out there, and there's a lot of data. <laughs> Take this data, analyze, get some insights, and try to understand what is the importance of the inst the, that ins insight. Eventually, communicate and act on it. So let's deep dive into each one of these steps. The first step of the process is to understand who are our competitors. And of course, with every company, you know, we have the well-known competitors that we are familiar with. So my suggestion is just create a list of all the names of the competitors and classify the tier of the competitor. Tier meaning one, two, three, how much this company is a threat to us. This can always change, be mindful. In my previous company, some competitors moved around because of new partnerships or acquisitions that went totally wrong. So it is a dynamic list that we should maintain. This is why it's written, maintain the list, keep in mind. And along the way, you'll come across new competitors, okay, due to new players entering the space, or we, or us as a company, we extended our services, and now the, our services overlaps with other companies. 
And when you do, or when you consider a new competitor, think or ask yourself questions, why is this company considered a competitor? What are we competing on? And of course, what is the level of risk? We talked about the, our tiering, one, two, three. Um, maybe their main space is not similar to ours, but it can change quickly. So take a look on Snapchat or Facebook uh, uh, example. So as I said before, keep in mind that list is always dynamic and keep maintaining it. The next step is to collect data of our competitors. So first of all, we kind of narrow down. We define who the competitors are, but now we want to collect the data. And we have a few channels that we can actually leverage. The first one is tools. There are so many tools out there just waiting for us to use. Some are free, some are not. I will be sharing with you, you know, the tools that I've been using. Um, I'm not promoting anyone, but this is based on my experience. So you have the obvious one, the Google Alerts, Owler, Crunchbase, SimilarWeb, Product Hunt. And, you know, when I had my own startup, I Product Hunt was my home to look and track every new competitor that is a new competitor that is entering the market. There are also paid um, paid tools like Crayon, for example, that I love and use a lot, that uses machine learning mechanism to not only uh, provide you the information you need, but also categorize it. So if there was a change in management, they would put it under a bucket of executive um, management change. We used Mention, there is Knowledge360 and SEMrush. Really, I'm just name dropping here, but take a look on these um, tools and take advantage of any of what they have to offer. The second channel is sales. And sales, uh, as product managers, it is so important to understand the importance of the, the sales channel to this is the, our way to get to the field, to get a better understanding and kind of a pulse checking of what's going on there. It's like multiplying our you know, intelligence power. We have the pre-sales, customer success, sellers, customers engineer. We need to leverage any information that they can actually share with us. And the way we do it, so having conversations you know, during QBRs, MBRs, we used to have sales sync sessions on a weekly basis. So these are the kind of forums that you can leverage and gather the information you need. Also, not forget when we're talking about sales, there, are, there is a CRM system that you probably use. And what, we, what I did actually when, um, when uh, I established this process, I worked closely with the sales operations team to make sure I captured the right data points I needed to make an analysis and, made, and make you know, better understanding of what our competitors are doing and who are we losing to? What are the kind of deals that we're winning when there is competition? Whether is there competition? I can tell you that um, we thought that one competitor we, we lost most of the deal to, but after checking the CRM and running some reports, we found out it's, it's a different competitor that we're losing to. And then it makes you think and you need to act accordingly. Another channel of um, data collection, analysts. There are you know, analysts out there, Gardner, Forrester, take a look on their reports, get some insights that will, will help you to get decisions afterwards. Customers, they are out there, they're using not only our products, but also our competitors. You know, I'm working for GCP, a Google Cloud Platform. There are kind of multiple cl cloud providers uh, that our customers are using. And these sessions are insightful. If you will ask the right questions, you will get a lot of understanding and a lot of data based on these uh, sessions. So use, you know, customer sessions, conferences, whether it's customer advisory board or any event that you're actually uh, conducting, just use this opportunity to gather some more information. And last, partners, same as customers, you have partners who are working with your competitors. Talk with them, 
understand what your competition is doing, what's working, what's not, you will gather a lot of insights out of these um, conversations. So we define the, comp the competition, who our competitors are. We collected the data. Now, what do we do about the data we collected? So as I said, my previous company, we had over 40 competitors to track. The way we did it was by delegation. There wasn't one person really responsible for competitive intelligence. So each product manager in his or her own space tracked the specific competitor. And what they did was they dedicated 10 minutes a day, every day, to check what's happening out there. So the alerts combined with the data that we gathered from the channels I just talked about, 10 minutes a day. And sometimes when needed, we did this kind of deep dive um, uh, impact and try to understand what is this feature about, okay, whether it's going to demos and take a look on webinars and website and YouTube uh, uh, videos to have a better understanding of what it is. And if it is a new executive or a new CPO, you know, you try to understand what's their backup, what they did before, like um, what is their background and how or will it will take the product going forward. And last is come up with a compelling analysis. So what is the impact? Is it important? Is it not important for us as a company? and try to figure out what, what should we take out of this um, analysis. Just, it sounds a lot. So what I want to reassure you that not every day we had something to share or an analysis to run. It seems I know like a lot of effort, but it's a nice break. You know, we as product managers, we, we concentrate on our product, on what we do. We look inside our company and we need to make sure we're broadening our kind of overview of what's happening out there. So once a day, it's like, you know, brushing your teeth. It just becomes a habit. You take a look and see what's happening around you. Once we got the insights, we did the deep dive, we took a look at it, and then we try to figure out what is the impact and how it will influence the way we act. So I will share with you the kind of classification that I used. Keep in mind that it is, you know, um, it will change based on the company's maturity and structure, especially when you're a startup, you care about more things when you're at scale. So I can give you an example of the classification that we use. So our class one was the most important uh, kind of insight. So if we had an executive ch team change, any new products that were launched, merges and acquisitions, strategic partnerships or any pricing and packaging changes. This is where we uh, classified um, this insight as class one. Class two was more around product updates, new features, you know, negative reviews or partners that were added. And the last class was more informative. So any awards that the, competitor, the competition, uh, the competitors won, financial informations or any events that uh, they were conducting. So we did all of this. What do we need to do? We need to know what to do about it. So we have the classification and by classification, we had action plan. And these are some examples of action plans and what to do. So first, if you do have, and if you don't, I highly recommend it to have battle cards and some presentations around this, uh, uh, this topic. Because eventually, besides the product and besides us being you know, aware of what's going on out there, um, going on out there, after gathering the insights and classified it, we need to know what to do about it. How should we act and what should we do about it? And here are a few examples of what we can do. First one is to update. And if you don't have any to create some assets like paddle cards and presentations. So besides what you know, us uh, as product managers cares about what the competition is doing, we have salespeople who are out there and need to face it. 
when you know they're approaching a customers. We need to provide them the right you know uh, assets for them to understand what are our strengths against you know the competition and how should they drive the conversation. So update any uh, assets that you have or create one based on the analysis and the insights you gathered. And also have an actionable plan, okay? So we gathered the information. We know what's going out there. We need to communicate to the relevant stakeholders. They need to know what's out there. So exact change, I would like our C-level to know that there has been a change within our competition. So we need to make sure we deliver uh, this message at time and we use some templates um, to uh, announce this kind of uh, information. This will also inform our product strategy and roadmap sessions. And eventually our sales teams during QBRs, it's quarterly business reviews, our uh, monthly business reviews to just share what we just know and what kind of information is important to the field to know when they are reaching out there. So these were the five steps to competitive intelligence process. Define your competitors, collect the data about them, gather the insights, understand how it impacts your company by classifying the, the insights, and eventually act and communicate. To recap what we learned today, we learned today that competitive intelligence is a systematic collection of information to support our executives in their decision-making. Competitive intelligence influences our product strategy and roadmap, and we saw an example of you know, Snapchat and Facebook. Lastly, I shared with you five steps process to enable competitive intelligence in your company. I would like to thank you so much for taking the time to be here with me and have a great rest of your day.